It is an honor to be with you, my beloved, dear, heart, Dharma friend, Wes. I love this man. And we have known each other for close to half a century. And now, of course, everything is a mystery. All the more so, Wes, black hair. I went to visit him and there was black hair among this sea of what he calls affectionately the grannies at the place where he lives. And of course, the grannies are all eyeing the black haired guy with some interest, as a matter of fact. Wherever he loved, wherever he goes, people love him because he's unfailingly kind. And that's the reality of this human being. So Wes's body is 80 years old, and like the Buddha in his last year, who was 80, just your age, and said, my body's like an old cart bound together with straps and thongs falling apart. That was the Buddha's description. You get it, right? Um, and yes, um, I remember talking to Ajahn Chah when he was old and pretty sick, and I said to him as a young man, well, you always taught us about old age, sickness, and death. He paused and stared at me and said, yeah, don't say that so lightly. You know, it's one thing to say at that age. Um, and there you are, you know, you are living in a semi-assisted living place. You're losing your memory somewhat. Can we talk about this? We're Buddhists. We talk about this stuff, right? Um, we all know our bodies go through changes, that it's not unique to someone, it's us who will age. And we'll all have it in our own way, in our own practice. And so we get to hold hands together as we do this, our community. And maybe more than anything else, it's that coming together and say, we're with each other as we do this, as this great turning of lives, especially our generation, Wesley, um, which is sort of turning off the map somehow that we know. And yet, in your song about uh, Smile Like the Buddha, you say, Smile Like the Buddha, make it a little bit wry, you know, just that here we are, isn't this amazing that we're here together? We've been close friends since, I think, 19, early 1970s. And when I first came to San Francisco, in the early days, I read in the San Francisco Chronicle their annual list of the 10 most influential people in the Bay Area. You know, there was the mayor, I think it was before Willie Brown, and there was, you know, whoever was the senator, and there was Scoop, among the 10 most influential people. Remember that, Wes? We, 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 had, we had our day. We had our day, right? And then you say, how the hell did this happen? How did he get out of Norfolk, Nebraska, with the circuit rabbi, Rabbi Fallick, coming in the bus to his house to give him his bar mitzvah portion and him running away so people wouldn't see, you know? How did he become this amazing coyote, newscaster, dharma, songster, um, and in a funny way, with a kind of humility, become a prophet, you know, because he was there before John Stewart and Stephen Colbert were telling the truth on the news. He was doing, which is why he was so celebrated. You'd tune in and Wes would say, here's what's actually happening. Forget that so-called um, what did our ex-president call the media? I won't, I won't even say it, but anyway, Wes was the real media. Because he is playful, he's playfully interested and curious and open-minded and open-hearted as much as he is kind, he was able to get the scoop everywhere. People trusted him. And I remember reading about how you interviewed one of the survivors who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and saying things like, well, what was it like being in the air? You know, and how was it when you hit? <laughs> Questions we all would want to ask, but it was, it was very genuine. 
you know, or dropping acid with Tim Leary as you drove across the Bay Bridge to interview him, interview him on the radio and saying, well, if I'm with Tim Leary, why wouldn't I, you know? Or in India, when we were together interviewing the young Dalai Lama, when we went over to the temple and said, we want to see the Dalai Lama, they said, what time do you want to come? Oh, this afternoon, sure. And then he said to us, after we asked him some questions, we were about to leave and we were, it was so sweet. And then he looks at us and he said, don't you want to take my picture? <laughs> you give me your camera, I'll give it to my attendant, and we can all be in it, in it together. It's been on my refrigerator, it was for like a decade, Wes and I, and two other people we were there together with. He was there at the founding of the Western Insight Meditation Movement, together with Sharon Salzberg and Joseph Goldstein and Danny, Danny Goldman and Ramdas and so forth, at the first courses of Goenka and Bodh Gaya you know, in the early 1970s, all of whom are still his friends. Um, he raised Rose in the hippie commune, and you can see it still. <laughs> <laughs> he should be so proud. It's great. Yeah, she's turned out so, so well. Um, and God, is he funny, you know? He talked about being a cross in the old days between a hippie and a yuppie. He named himself a huppy. He said, don't worry, be huppy, was his. And I remember asking, Trudy and I were together with him and saying, these bon mots and these jokes and these witticisms, you know, they come so quickly. You know, do you think about it? And he said, no, it's, it's kind of like having Tourette's. <laughs> it just blurts out of this amazing mind in these witty, funny, charming, beautiful ways. Instead of, you are what you eat, he said, more accurately, you are what you don't poop. <laughs> you gotta hand it to him. <laughs> he analyzes the human situation and then turns it around in this amazing way so that we can see it. The beats were your inspiration. I know that, you know, reading about what Kerouac said and reading Walt Whitman, cheer up, where Whitman said, cheer up slaves and horrify the, for, you know, the foreign despots and don't spend your life just producing and consuming all that crap that, they, that you don't need anyway. I see a vision of a great rucksack revolution, thousands, millions of young Americans wandering around, going up to the mountains to pray, making children laugh and old men glad, making young girls happy and old girls happier, all of them Zen lunatics who go about writing poems that happen to appear in their heads for no reason, also by being kind and also by strange, unexpected acts, keep giving visions of eternal freedom to everybody and to all living creatures. How's that, Wesley? You know? We traveled, as Nina mentioned. We traveled to Bali and hung out with shamans and did writer's retreat there. We traveled on the Turkish coast, and there was Wes in this ancient Greek, huge Greek amphitheater, declaiming, if you don't like the news, go out and make your own to all the Greek followers, you know? We traveled to India, India, of course, all over the U.S., by Cetus and places like that, you know. And always, you can see it in the Gratitude Hut, the images in India of Wes riding elephant back with James Barras and Joseph Goldstein and so forth on his way to ordination under the, under the Bodhi tree. And in India, we talked with the Dalai Lama, we talked with Mother Teresa. We actually pissed her off, which is a whole other story takes a lot to piss her off, but we did it, you know. We uh, talked to the president of India, remember that, Wes? But the, the thing that I remember, because he was doing his man on the street, was we were riding in a man-pulled rickshaw in Calcutta. Calcutta was one of the last urban areas with its cobblestone streets that had people who pulled the rickshaw between these two long poles. Um, and there was this guy, he told us he was 65 years old, barefoot, calloused on the cobblestone streets. And we asked how much he worked. He said, I work every day. 
because I support 14 people. Um, and Wes did this whole interview with him. And the thing that was so beautiful is he treated the rickshaw puller and the Dalai Lama and Mother Teresa and the various people all with the same curiosity and kindness and interest. Um, and it made for incredible radio and news, but more than that, it made for heartful radio and heartful news in this beautiful way. Always interested and always kind. He's a nature lover who rewrote evolution in a song, a prescient visionary who did his musical so-called comedy, The Empire Strikes Out, decades ago, that had, as a prophet, it had humor and art and theater and dharma, and it showed what we're experiencing now, the troubles with climate and global warming and refugees around the world and call for racial and economic justice all in there. He saw all of that, and then he turned it into song and art and music and said, wake up my fellow, whatever you are. What are we, Wesley? Beings, we'll call us. What? Mammals, wake up fellow mammals, he says. That's us. You said in your teachings and in your writings that from early on you were looking for home. So I'd like to ask you to stand up Walker or not, and come up to the front here just a little bit. Can someone help him if he needs it? He's a little shaky, but then again, that's impermanence. And when you come up here, turn around so you can see all the other mammals in the room with you. Right there is good, turn around. Oh yeah, you make your bow to the Buddha, Kuan Yin, and all of that. Now look at all these mammals behind you and stand there. Okay, so those of you who have taught with Wes, please stand up. Thank you. Those of you who have worked with Wes, please stand up. Those of you who've studied with Wes, please stand up. Those of you who are moved by Wes, please stand up. Those of you who are friends with Wes, please stand up. And now I'd like you to gaze at him and Wes to you to look back and do some metta practice, some loving kindness as you gaze at this man who's really offered so much in this miraculous and weird and completely wonderful and unique, no one ever, all the other Dharma teachers, you could sort of substitute one, Jack, Sharon, Joseph, whatever, but they're sort of the same. Nobody ever in the universe even close to this being, right? The most unique. So I want you to gaze at him. He's carried by the love, by the love of truth, and by wonder and awe. That's what he wanted you to all see, the sense of wonder and mystery. And now direct your metta. Shower him with love. Wesley, may you be safe. May you be protected. May you be held by the love of all of these beings, all these mammals who are with you on this amazing earth. May you be held by the Dharma, along with Nina Wise right now. Yeah, feel the goodness that you have shared with so many and let it come in, beam it to him, surround him. Touch your body your heart, your spirit, every part of you. You've given so much love in so many ways and so much wit and so much heart. And we're with you, we are with you. We're 
are with you in love. Thank you all, and especially thank you, my dear brother.